Hello everyone, okay, welcome back to another episode on Physical Geography, okay, we're back with part 13, okay, moving on to our second part, okay, of cast land forms, okay, um, in fact, I, I should say actually the cast landscape series, okay, so the first part of the video, um, was actually on an introduction to cast, okay, what are the main processes, the factors, and what cast actually is, okay, um, I'll leave a link up there in the top right hand corner of the screen, okay, go ahead, click on it, um, check out the first part of the video if you have not already done so, if not, I will jump right into this um, video, okay, because cast landforms is quite a chunky bit. So I want to take my time to actually go through it properly um, with you guys, okay, because I know cast is a topic that a lot of you tend to struggle with, especially when it comes to um, physical job as a whole. Okay, firstly, you need to understand that there are three main cast landforms, okay. There's going to be this thing called the cone cast, then you have got the tower cast, and lastly, the isolated cast. Okay, the reason why I said lastly okay, is because these three are the main three landforms that you need to know for your syllabus. Okay, um, check out your syllabus document. It is all inside. Okay, the reason why I added in one more over here, which is case. Okay, is because um, when it comes to A levels, okay, you always need to go above and beyond. Okay, you need to talk about a subsurface landform that is part of the cast landscape as well. Okay, so I'll explain what case are. Okay, some of you may not have learned it. Some of you may have learned it. Okay, so if you have not, okay. Make sure you listen up carefully for that part. Okay, let's first go through the cockpit cast. Okay, the cockpit cast. Okay, a lot of you think that the cockpit cast is like, you know, um, it's a, it's a cast land form on itself. No, it's not. Okay, the cockpit cast is essentially um, the cone tower and isolated cast family. Okay, so first thing you need to know is that the cockpit cast, okay, they, it possesses an 8 carton type topography. Okay, if you look at this, okay, this is the chocolate hills. Okay, some of you may have heard of it before. Okay, it looks like an egg carton, right? You think of an egg carton, you flip it around. Okay, it basically looks like that. Okay, so what exactly is a cockpit cast topography um, landscape kind of um, thing? Okay, essentially it is basically star-shaped depressions, okay? Surrounded by cone-shaped hills with an egg carton type topography. Okay, basically a cockpit cast is basically a bunch of um immature okay um very young cone cars that are basically coming together okay so let's go through the formation how does the cockpit cast even form okay how cockpit cars even forms okay is when river channels start to develop inside cockpits uh uh or either that a lot of fissures okay basically a lot of large joints okay limestone is notorious for having a lot of joints right because of their bedding plane right so when there's a lot of wa um, water that actually runs through okay when it starts to erode and weather okay river channels will start to form okay so firstly this will form underground caves okay we'll go through this more in depth, in depth later on okay but basically as these caves start to grow bigger and bigger okay and they, as they become thinner and weaker okay they may actually collapse so there's this thing called a cave collapse when the cave collapses, okay, it actually forms huge valleys. Okay, so think of it like this. Okay, I'll draw it out over here. Think of it as a cave like this. Okay, as there's a lot of water running through. Okay, what actually happens okay, is that the cave may start to collapse. Oops, let me use a pen. Okay, the cave may collapse like this. And so repeated amounts of this will actually form your cone um, cast okay, or your cockpit cast, which is basically this part over here use a highlighter for that or this here okay so as a result k actually gives rise to an egg carton type topography as we have just mentioned okay so then brings the question what are cone cars okay so cone cars like i have just mentioned is basically part of the cockpit cars it is basically low hills with very very gentle sides right as we had just seen previously right so it's essentially an expansion of cockpits from various sides so it's basically kind of like a slightly older version of a cockpit right um, how does it even form? Okay, let's go through this real quick. Okay, as the weathering and river erosion starts to take place more and more often, okay, it wears down the limestone. So it forms this new landform called an alluvial plain. I won't go through this in this um, um, video, okay, but if you are interested, okay, let me know down below in the comment. I'll go through another, um, I'll create another video for alluvial plains, your know, dough lines, a lot of other cast landforms that you have. Okay, so what happens is that the remaining limestone in between will continue to experience a lot of weathering and erosion. As a result, these enlarged cockpits on the sides are known as your cone casts. So basically, over time, okay, cone casts will start to form as a result of those collapsed caves that we had just seen over here. 
Okay, so it's essentially all these over here. These are basically where your cone cards will start to form. Okay, then comes next one, tower cards. Tower cards is slightly more tricky. Okay, but essentially what it is, is just a steeper variety of cone cards. Alright, it is basically bigger in terms of your height and your diameter. Okay, so your height diameter ratio is going to be larger. It's basically um, something like this if I were to draw it out. Okay, this could be a tower cast. A ta uh, so this could be a cone cast. This is cone cast. Tower cast could be something like this. Huge. It's very, very big. Okay, we'll see an example later on. How does it form? Okay, so this one is where you need to bring your concepts on chemical weathering um, into this place. Okay, I'll leave a link up there in the right-hand corner of the screen. Okay, um... When there's repeated cycles of solution, okay, I've gone through solution before, and the precipitation of calcium bicarbonate, okay, water which starts to run down the streams, okay, during your rainy seasons, okay, when it starts to run down, right, it may actually end up drying and precipitating, okay, a lot of calcium bicarbonate, okay, basically your limestone along the sides, okay, why? Because of the trade winds. Okay, I've gone through this before in my first video, okay, your ITCZ video, okay, I'll also leave a, leave a link up there, okay, go check it out as well. So basically, these trade winds is what will start to dry it up, okay? Because the trade winds are very strong, it blows against the tower cast. It will cause the limestone to precipitate and dry up. So this is a case of case hardening. Oh, wow, look at that case of case, okay? So basically, this term is case hardening of limestone. You need to know this term, very important. So like I've mentioned just now, okay, there are basically the precipitation of calcite deposits on the hard, uh, on the, on the, on the um, steeper side of the slopes. Okay, and this uh, case hardening effect, okay, is extremely hard to dissolve. Okay, you understand later on, okay, that they are basically called resistant cap rock. This term over here. Okay, extremely, extremely resistant to any weathering and erosion. As a result, what actually happens is that a lot of times, okay, when there's repeated rainfall and then there's drying, then there's rain, then there's drying, then there's rain, then there's drying, okay, what actually happens is that these um, resistant cap rock, okay, will start to build layer and layer and layer. That is how they actually grow in their diameter, okay? That's why they will grow from being, let's say, something like this to being something like, let's say, this, okay? Because a lot of it at the side over here could all be resistant cap rock, Okay, and so as they continue to build more and more, okay, it will start to grow higher and higher and higher as it builds on top as well. Okay, because why? It builds on top over here as well. Okay, so it will build higher. That's why it becomes extremely big. Okay, so this is what we call the tower cast. So make sure you know this, okay, because it's part of your syllabus, you have to understand what a tower cast is and how it forms, okay? So an example would be in this case, okay, I think this is either Vietnam or some somewhere around there i think if i'm not wrong okay but basically this is how a tower cast looks like okay if as you can see it is extremely extremely high okay and it can also be extremely extremely wide so this is your diameter versus your height ratio and if it ever comes up for case study okay make sure you always compare to the size of your people you notice know, down here is the is where your, your people are they are extremely extremely small so you can barely even see them they're also tiny okay whereas your tower cast is extremely huge so always point it out, okay, when it comes to the exam, if it ever comes up for case study and they ask you to compare between the size difference. Okay, then you have moved on to isolated cast. Isolated cast actually is the same thing. It's basically a tower cast which has been basically excluded, okay, has been pushed outwards, okay, as a result of a meandering river. Okay, meandering rivers I'll cover in another video, okay. Um, basically what happens is that when a meandering river forms okay, because of repeated rainfall for example and if your joints are very big and then they start to collapse or that kind of things okay, it will actually cause a meandering river to form so this meandering river can actually push out your tower cast and if it pushes it out by itself it can actually become an isolated cast okay so just take note that you need to include the idea of a meandering river in this so isolated cars will look something like this. You see a lot of this um, as a form of tourist destination. Okay, it can be very, very um, interesting to look at. Okay. Okay, so next I move on to caves. Okay, this is an extra landform that you ought to know. Okay, because why? A lot of other people out there who are studying job already understand what caves are. Okay, yes, it is slightly more complicated, but this is it's a, it's essentially a subterranean, okay, subsurface landform that is good know why because when it comes to discussing your 20 mark essays and you need a form of balance okay you can always discuss on one hand how your surface landforms are being affected by let's say climate okay or what factor but at the same time your subsurface um, landforms are also being affected 
and hence you can actually balance and weigh okay which one um are the more common landforms okay or which one which factor plays a more important role because why it affects both surface and subsurface i'll go through more on that later on okay factors don't worry about it okay so caves what are caves okay it's basically a solution a solutional opening underground um whereby it is large enough for a human to enter it's just a very generic definition this one copy paste from textbook okay but the main characteristic of it is this your speleotomes okay what are these it's basically consisting of your stalactites and stalagmites okay this is basically every time you see a cave right you notice how let's say if a cave looks like this okay there will be all these like kind of like sharp things right that point downwards and you think it's ice but it's not actually ice Okay, so these things are your stalactites and stalagmites. Okay, mites, think of it like termites. So termites, think of it on the ground. So these are your mites. And the top one are your tights. TN. Okay, go through more later. Okay, for case, you need to understand these two different zones. Okay, it's your preatic versus your vado zone. So preatic is basically a wet zone, whereas vado is your dry zone. So preatic tends to actually form circular shaped cave. Why? Because your whole cave is wet, so the erosion takes place everywhere as like a circle. Whereas Vado Zone's cave is dry, but there will be there will be occasional times whereby there will be water which will cause erosion. As a result, it tends to um leave rectangular shaped caves. Okay, so a mix of both cave will actually form keyhole shaped caves. Why? Because if you think about it, uh, one of them is circle, one of them rectangle. When you combine the two, it is basically like a keyhole like this. It looks like a mushroom, but it's actually like a like a keyhole, something like this. Okay? Okay, moving on. So caves have basically entrances via dough lines or in vertical shafts. Okay, dough lines I won't go through. Okay, how does it form? Okay, look at the formation. Uh. So underground passages are basically formed along lines of structural weaknesses. We learned this before back in cockpit cars, right? How does it even form? Okay, because of your fissures, your joints, your bedding planes. Um, your underground passages start to kick in and start to form. So the part where it actually becomes a cave, okay, is when these joints start to enlarge. So enlargement of joints, okay, due to this thing called solution, back to your chemical writing video, okay, go and study it. Okay, by circulating water and abrasion by sediment that arrives in higher flow from the surface, okay, anything that infiltrates in will actually cause solution to occur and erosion. So as a result, okay, there will be chemically precipitated carbonate deposits. Okay, why? When your water starts to dry up, okay, when it evaporates, okay, it leaves behind the contents which is vastly uh, um, apparent over there, which is calcium bicarbonate. Okay, so this is where your speleotomes will start to form. So then we break it down. Okay, so water in the cave that may evaporate due to precipitation of CaCO3, which is calcium bicarbonate, right? They can form vertical bodies of limestone from the roof. Okay, so those that you see on top, like this, okay, these are stalactites. And those which are on the floor, okay, so those which are on the floor, let's use a different ink. Let's say like this. Okay, they are stalagmites. Okay, so it depends on where it in um it it basically dries up. Okay, why do they form on top over here? Okay, it's because some of them okay, may actually seep in from the from the top from the surface, the cracks from the surface. So water may actually seep in and then but then the thing is that they may not reach the ground. So they will just condense up there. Where sometimes they may actually fall to the ground, hence they will form stalagmites at the bottom. So when these two actually meet, okay, what happens is that they'll basically form a pillar. Something like this. Okay, they'll form a pillar. This one is just good to know. Okay, but stalactites, stalagmites, you must know because it is part of the formation of a cave. Okay, so an example would be this. Okay, as I have just discussed, okay, stalactites, okay, um, go ahead and point it out for yourself. Okay, these are your stalactites. Whereas those at the bottom you see down there, these are your stalagmites. Okay, so you notice there's a lot of water, right? So this could be a preatic zone. Most likely a preatic zone. Okay. Okay, so next is factors. Okay, this is an exam requirement. You need to know what the factors which affect casts are, right? I've gone through some of this in the first part, okay, but this one is more pertaining to landform um centric. So the most important factors that I feel, okay, firstly is no doubt climate. Why? Climate is the reason why um there's solution. It is the reason why um, things like case hardening even takes place. 
case where it affects both surface and subsurface landforms, you can always argue that yes, rainfall is actually the more important factor here. Next, chemical composition. Why? Because the karst landscape is characteristic because of limestone, right? So in order for limestone to even be there, you need to have a proper chemical composition of rocks for solution and carbonation to later exploit. After which, I would say fissures and joints are also important because caves won't form or cockpit casts, they won't even form had there not been joints and fissures. But you can always argue that the reason why joints and fissures is because of the chemical composition of rocks. So you notice everything is kind of like an inner order. So the reason why I put climate first case is because it still tends to operate on a larger scale. So out of all of them, it still operates on the larger scale. It can affect everything in the area. Okay, so lastly, come, coming to our exam requirements. Okay, this video, yes, is a bit longer, okay, but I hope you really understand the three main landforms that I've gone through. Okay, understand the different factors which may which may affect. Okay, I've just explained this to you, so you should be able to explain it well. Okay, of course, you need to explain more. Okay, so how I will write the essay, okay, is I will start with a factor and then move on to talk about the landform. Okay, if not, the other approach is you talk about the landform and then you weigh the factors in within that body paragraph of the landform itself. Okay, so assess which factor plays the most important role. This one is a no-brainer. Okay, and then lastly, be able to discuss both surface and subsurface. Okay, this is where you will get your higher mark. So if you want your L5, okay, you need to talk about your subsurface landforms as well because that is what all the A star students are doing. Okay, so if not, okay, that was all I have for cars. Okay, it's actually quite simple if you really take a step back um, watch this video a few times, okay, um, and understand, okay, try practicing the essays yourself, okay, you realize that GCAS is not as hard as it seems. In fact, I feel Aeolian can actually be trickier, okay. So if you did enjoy this video, okay, do be sure to give it a thumbs up, okay, let me know down in the comment section below, okay, if you have any questions, if you want me to go through other cast then forms, okay, I'll definitely release a third part to this series on that. Okay, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy it, okay, because it really does help me out a lot. Okay, so if not, Till the next video, I will see you guys very, very soon. Okay, I'm not sure what the next video will be. We'll see where my upload schedule um, ties in with. Okay, if not, continue to work hard. Okay, you're almost there. Um, I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye-bye.